To clear some concepts about DirectG12, I will explain some of the API functions, which will be gradually applied during this chapter. Let's start with the command list. Command list allows to queue GPU commands into the memory, which then are executed by calling the function execute command list. For example, some commands are resource barrier, clear render target view, clear depth stencil view, or draw indexed instance. Fences allows to create synchronization points between the GPU and the CPU. To synchronize an event from the GPU at the end of a frame, we will use common skew signal, and in the CPU, we will wait for this event using set event on completion and wait for single object. Now, if a signal comes from the CPU, the GPU waits for this value with common skew's wait function. To avoid annoying screen tearing, in this course, we will always use vSync. Now, how does vSync work with double buffer? If we look at the diagram, the vSync events are happening in periods with names T0, T1, T2, or T3. When the GPU has not finished before a vSync, as in T3, both the CPU and GPU are dragged to the next vSync event. To avoid these waiting times from the CPU, we will use triple buffering, which allows the CPU to start executing before the GPU finishes processing a frame. Now, what happens if a frame takes too much time in the GPU? The fence will make the CPU to wait until the GPU executes the respective signal command. Another important GPU synchronization concept are barriers, with which the GPU gets told that the resource usage will be changed. In Direct3D12, there are three types of barriers, transitions, UAB, and aliasing. In this chapter, we will use the transition barriers to indicate the GPU that a render target will be used to refresh the monitor's image, and then indicate that the resource can be reused for drawing. One tool we will use in this course is Windows PIX, which can be used to record and display the CPU and GPU instructions. It allows us to see the states of the GPU resources using the analysis tool, and debug the vertex and pixel shaders. For the vertex shares, we can see the vertices information from the input assembly and trace the program which builds the position and the other output attributes of the shader. In the case of the pixel shares, we can view the grinding history and debug the shares which run over this pixel.